Hello. We humans are pretty noisy when we tromp around in the bush with our big boots and our big voices. So the animals tend to avoid us, but they do leave some signs that they've been around. And one of the most common ones is the humble scat. And if we look down here, there's a scat here now we can see. And if we want to identify this scat, there's a great book we can use called Track Scats and Other Traces by Barbara Triggs. The book's in four sections. It's, in, it's got a section on tracks, scats, shelters and scrapes, as well as bones. And today we're going to look at the book and see the process of trying to figure out, well, what is this scat here? So the first section is we go to the scats, the key to the scats, and that's on page 90. And what we need to do in this book is, uh, includes the ruler for us. We need to measure the size of the scat. So if we look at the ruler on the back of the book, you can see here this particular scat, pile of scats, you measure the width of the scat, just a little bit over a centimetre. And in here we can see it's like an oval and rounded scat. And that shape is important as well to note because we want to decide first of all, is it a predator scat or is it a herbivore scat? The predator scats we can see here, they've got a tapered end and they're much longer and more like a cylinder. Whereas the herbivore scats are either oval, rounded or square. And so we've got some herbivore scats here with a width of just over a centimetre. And then our book from Barbara Triggs tells us we should look at plates 44 to 55. And we just have to work through the plates and look at the maps and see well, what is in fact is, is, uh, this is the species that we're looking for possibly in our area. So there's plate 44. They all look pretty large compared to uh, our scat on the ground. So if we move across there we can look at the maps here and we can see that swamp wallaby, would, it could be a swamp wallaby, it could be in our area, or it could be the red-necked wallaby. So we have to look at the numbers here, number 90, and see 87, 88, so we must turn the page over to page 90 and see, mm, that's the red-necked wallaby, could be that. The swamp wallaby scat looks a bit bigger. So at the moment it could be this particular one. Then we have to work through again, I'm looking at the maps now. And I don't see Ballarat on any of these maps in the shaded areas. So we can, we can ignore all of those. Move to the next page. Again, those scats, they look reasonably, this one potentially is the right size and this one possibly the right colour. But let's look at our maps. Again, I'm not seeing Ballarat in any of these areas here. So we can ignore those. Same again. The shapes, we can notice some shapes, and if we see a direct match, well, that might give us a bit of a clue. Move across to the next one. We're almost there. We're going to plate 55. Again, I don't see Ballarat here on any of these maps, so we'll move again again. Next page, looking a bit different now. These are definitely too small. And you can see with this book, there's a range, and it's all about the locality of where we are. Now, this one here has a little bit of a dot over Ballarat, Sambar Deer. So that's a possibility if we look, we look at uh, scat number 121. And there's that scat there, and gee, that's pretty similar as well. So at the moment we've got two choices really. It could be a sandbar deer or it could be the red-necked wallaby. So then our, our options are to look more closely at the red-necked wallaby scat. And it does talk about the fact that the scat often is left in a pile. The other thing we can do with our scats is to find a, a tool and break it open and have a look at the contents because a fresh scat is very different from a dried scat. Now this one's very dry, but if you look inside we'll see that green colour and very fibrous, very sim similar fibre shapes. And that is an indication that this could be a red-necked wallaby, more so than possibly a sandbar deer. It is difficult to tell and that's the thing about trekking with scats. Um, we get an indication, we zero in potentially on a particular, a particular family or maybe a genus, but maybe not a species of, of animal. But anyway, there's our scat today. There's the book from Barbara Triggs, Happy Scat Hunting. Bye.